It's practically my sexy poses. Oh Two favorite girls, John VF and Veronica, and we're here for I think our sixth show. But we've been in exams for a couple of weeks, so we're sorry that we've missed you. But we're ready to jump right into it and get into it. Mm -hmm. Let's go! All right, so today we're going to start with a discussion about 13th. It's a new documentary on Netflix, and the director, Ava DuVernay, she has come out with a lot of prolific works um, recently. So, this documentary is about mass incarceration in the United States and how it has devastated the African American community. Um, it's perpetuated a lot of stereotypes about us that are negative, and it, she goes into details about the origins of mass incarceration, starting with slavery and then ending in the most recent crime bills that were created by uh, President Clinton. And it's it's uh, pretty dynamic. However, if you're, I feel like African American, none of the stuff is new to you. It's just a reinforcement of what we've already known. So I don't know. I felt like a lot of it was new to me. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, we watched it together. We did. And a lot of times, I was asking her like, "Wait, who's that? Oh, what, what are they saying? <laughs> yeah. Wait, I didn't know that happened." <laughs> Because some of the things that were new to me were the bills that Bill Clinton actually signed in. Mm, yeah. I did not know that he was the reason why we have all these prisons. Right. And he's been on a committee yeah. pretty consistently yeah. that benefits from the reason why we have all these prisons. Right. And why we have so many people in prison, especially the black population and the brown population. Now you brought up a good point because um, I, I'm interested in things like this because my family has been impacted by honestly unjust prison sentences um, but th these are the types of things that are not taught in American classrooms mm -hmm. so it's not just white people that don't know about this it's black people that don't know about it either even if we have family members that are in and out of the prison system not understanding how insidious it is um, it, it makes it a, a challenge because it's one of the, it's almost like an invisible um, atrocity that's happening so. Yeah, and it's really sad because people refer to Bill Clinton as the first black president. Right. But I wonder if he should be more so referred to as the first president that imprisoned so many blacks. Yeah. Because from what I saw from that documentary, he was an integral part of the mass incarceration of black and brown people. Yeah. Do, well, do you think that the majority of people knew about Clinton's past? Um, I, I would say his Republican adversaries, yes, but they were also you know, an integral part of that bill. It was a bipartisan yeah. effort. Um, so if you don't like him, you probably know this because this is ammo against him. Right. And I know that the, uh, the Republican Party has been using this to target Hillary. Like, oh, you called, you know, poor black kids super predators back in the day. So, but I, I, the average person, I don't know. I don't think so. Well, think in so. the documentary, not to give too many spoilers, but everyone should go watch it. It was very enlightening, very educational, and not at all boring. But, um, there was a part where he actually gave an apology at the NAACP meeting, and he apologized for signing into um, into effect some bills that affected black and brown people in a poor manner or disproportionately. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder how much of that was because he was actually sorry and he felt apologetic and he was taking responsibility for his part in it, or was it because he knew his wife was running in the next year think, and he needed to I make that apology? I think it was the latter because you know he only made this. I mean, he may have made this apology in other places, but the only time I heard him apologize for the um, the crime bill and what it did to black people was at the NAACP right. uh, function. He never. I don't think he said that in front of any other audience. And then um, more recently, he got into this huge uh, argument or shouting match with Black Lives Matter activists oh, who are challenging him. They, I think they put that in there, maybe. Okay. Um, about I saw that with Hillary Clinton. Well, they did it with her, okay. too. But um, basically, they're like, you created this horrific bill, um, the crime bill. And he's basically like, well, you know what? Like, we put like these gangbangers away, and they were basically like selling to kids oh, and yeah, stuff. Right, and like, yeah. you're basically condoning that lifestyle, and like, I did you a favor. So to me, it's all just talk. He doesn't really think he did anything wrong. I, honestly, that's that's how I feel. Well, just to let everyone know, some things that I learned from the um, documentary that he actually started was he started three strikes policy. Mm -hmm. Um, he started mandatory sentencing. Yep. He started the truth and sentencing law, which requires that people serve 85 percent of their sentence. He also put in six, almost around 60 new capital punishment offenses, and he signed into effect the 21st century crime bill that allowed for a massive expansion of the prison industry and incentives for law enforcement for locking up people, basically. Yeah. It's, it's, 
How is he the first <laughs> black president? It's a, well, I mean, it's the same way that we, we as a society view President Lincoln as the savior of black people when his ultimate plan was to deport us all. These yeah. are in his records. I mean, we have an entire country in Africa, Liberia, that, you know, um, that's off tangent. But um, it's just both parties are complicit in what happened. And the thing, though, to me that separates the two parties is that I think the Democratic Party, um, I don't want to say they get it, but they're more in tune with reform, whereas I feel like there's a lot of conservative actors that are still in the realm of like trying to garner votes based off of being tough on crime because it's still an effective way to scare people into going to the polls. I used to feel that way, but after seeing that documentary and after um, being around a lot of people who think differently and listening to their perspectives, I think the Democratic Party is not just as bad as the Republican. I don't think they're outwardly, I don't think they're outwardly fear-mongering people, but I do think that they're it's all about the dollar sign for a oh, lot of no, them. Oh, no, I agree. I, I don't agree. think they feel like, oh, let's make this reform because it means a lot of, it means no, something. Yeah, I think that's why I try to preface what I was saying because it's like, at least that discussion's on the table with yeah. one party, whereas the other one is just really not as fluff. Although, randomly, Newt Gingrich was in there and he was speaking some truths, but yeah. it just, I, I, it was very... I wonder how much of that was truths that someone told him to say. Okay. Because he seemed to be quite on the side of fair and honesty. And, and admitting that this was a horrible mm -hmm. bias against as black folks, and I'm like, how, what? Like, it's Speaking of admitting, I do have a quote from the um, documentary that I wanted to read yeah, yeah. about the war on drugs, oh. and this shocked me okay. because I did not know that Richard Nixon's advisor actually admitted to this. Oh, yeah. He said, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit because I couldn't type it as quickly as I wanted to, he said, we had two enemies, anti-war and black people. You understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communi communities, arrest their leaders, raid their homes, and vilify them night after night. Did we know that we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. I don't think there's anything else to say after that. I mean... You're right. I, I was just absolutely shocked because not only did... To me, that, to me that's not an apology almost. That's more of a... We did. We knew what we did. What was wrong? And mm -hmm. they would do it again. It sounds like to me. Yeah, because absolutely. I feel like an apology is when you don't know that your actions were wrong, and you wish you hadn't have done that. Right. But they knew that they were wrong. They knew it. They admitted it. And they was like, "And what? Like, <laughs> and y'all locked up now? <laughs> y'all in jail now? Right. We're making hand over fist right. and money on on the on black bodies. Yep. And uh, so so one of the things we talked about in the movie was the irony that uh, so the Thirteenth Amendment, which was uh, designed to end slavery, also included. Um, making criminals slaves of the state. So we were just transferred from one form of slavery to another. Um, first being slaves and then being slaves of the state in prisons. So they use slave labor, a lot of companies nowadays, to make products from Victoria's Secrets to Walmart. Um, you, you name it, there's probably a prisoner making those products mm -hmm. for like, what, four cents, 10 cents yeah. an hour, something crazy like, like that. It's like 17 cent an hour. But we were talking about how ironic it is that they're making like Boeing uh, aircraft machinery, but mm -hmm. these are jobs that they couldn't get when they were free. And now that they're locked up, they have to work for free to make those parts. And that kind of a job on the outside would give them a livable wage. And I feel like would be transformative in, in the life of somebody who is otherwise right. pretty destitute. So that's well, they couldn't. They might not be able to get the job even leaving prison because now they have a prison exactly. record. Exactly. And a lot of these jobs have left the country. They're yeah. not even in America anymore. But they're doing. So something that came up from that conversation was, and we kind of talked about this a little bit last night, was you know you were saying like well, we need to unify, and I was like it's too much to unify again. It's like it's like if you watch the documentary, which I suggest everyone does, it's like forty companies that are doing this prison labor. Google, Apple, Victoria's Secrets. Oh. I was like I can't unify against all of them. <laughs> right. What, like, what am I gonna do? I can't get rid of this. I'm like not. starting with that. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. We can't even pretend to because when we come back next week, you know, y'all still got your MacBooks. Right, y'all ain't about that life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that just gives more respect to our parents and our grandparents Absolutely. for doing what they did and sacrificing what they did so we can be in a place um, that we are now. Well, I would like to end the conversation with, okay, so we're, we both agree that the prison industry and the structure that they have now, and also watch the documentary because it talks about how they're going to move from the prison industry, from making money from there, to actually using probation as making money and using um, different, different ways outside of going to prison to make money, but like basically having you in your house. What's that called? Like house arrest? House arrest. Basically using house arrest as a form of making money. Yeah. So I really recommend you to watch that documentary. But in the meantime, what's the solution? So I was thinking about this all last night. I was like... So, if I want, do I want 
laws that don't send people to jail? And if they don't go to jail, how do I feel safe? How do I feel protected? What is the solution to this? I think there's a solution actually in the works. And I think if we're waiting on people to see the humanity in, in, in our blackness, that's never going to happen. Just being frank. Um, one point in the movie that I really liked in a philosophy that I kind of live by is um, this guy, he said basically how... You, you think when you're learning about history, like how could people allow the institution of slavery to happen, something so horrific? And then how could they then allow Jim Crow to happen? How could they be okay and comfortable with and even have picnics around hanging bodies of black people and make postcards out of them? How could they allow such an unjust system to take place? But it's, like, but it's happening now. You have the same group of people that are okay with one out of every three black men being in prison and losing their right to vote and basically losing their humanity like you're okay with the decimation of a group of people over and over again and the system really hasn't changed it just evolves every generation and and when it evolves it's it's much more um it's much better hidden you know from mm -hmm. the consciousness of our society so that's something i wholly agree with um and i unfortunately i think there's just gonna be something new and, and when our kids are, are, are around um what i think the change can come from is the opioid epidemic yeah. Because the opioid epidemic is predominantly an issue with um, white people. And because of that, they're now getting the kinds of sentences in prison that were supposed to just be for black people. And because they have the power in this country, all oh, that's not going to happen. And that has created, I would say, changes that we've never even seen before mm -hmm. so fast. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the legislators changing policies, and now they're talking about um, drug use in the lens of mental Addiction. health and yeah. public health instead yeah. of criminality. And they're not putting people in prison. Now they're putting them in outpatient programs. That's something they never offer to black people. And in fact, instead, they made rules to make sure you were in jail longer for drug offenses. So I think that is a way for us to be able to get out of this horrible, uh, I guess, unjust prison terms that we've been getting in the past. I don't know. Well, I'll let that be our <laughs> last commentary, a last piece of commentary on that topic and move on to the next thing. That's it. All right. Well, I good. winked at them. You would. You would.